Bonjour amigos, back by popular demand, more orcs. By any orc standards, the blood axes are considered to be a bit dodgy by the other orcs, and with good reason. Blood axes have many traits that actually make them almost civilised. They plan ahead, reason their courses of action out to a much larger extent than some of the other clans, and they are not averse to openly trading with other worlds. They will even entertain the notion of ooh, retreat as a necessity if a battle is going badly. They have also adopted some sensible military habits, even if they have been somewhat misconstrued. For a start, they believe that getting shot is not a good thing, and generally they tend to avoid it as it messes up a damn good scrap. To this end, they favour camouflage. It doesn't necessarily follow that it has to be a camouflage scheme that will actually conceal you. In fact, the louder the better sometimes. Their totem, if you hadn't already guessed, is a skull with crossed axes. Orc glyphs differ from clan to clan as you'd expect, but by far it is the blood axes who use the most diverse glyphs. Axes, of course, skulls, teeth, fangs and claws. Symbols of that ilk. Unlike the other orc clans, they tend to favour strategy in the use of battlefield tactics, as opposed to going in all guns blazing. As such, the blood axes generally tend to be far more regimented than the other clans, certainly more dangerous in some respects, especially if the opposing army are used to dealing with other orc clans that tend to be more unruly and somewhat haphazard in their approach. Right, on with the show! Our Blood Axe contingent here are actively using a camouflage scheme of sorts. Not exactly inconspicuous, but if you're a green-skinned badass with no idea of the concept of camouflage, then purple and blue are definitely the way forward. Nobody will see them coming. Then we'll do their belts and boots and other parts of the uniforms with other sensible colours, but as regular viewers will know, I prefer to paint the orc skin first before the uniforms and armour, and if you want to see how that's done, check out Out to Lunch's very first video, which gives you a rundown of how to paint orc skin. Well, how I paint it anyway. The biscuits of choice today are bourbons, aided and abetted with a nice mug of black coffee. Blood axes are often considered to be traitors amongst their own, as they have been known to fight alongside humans. Hence them often being referred to as untrustworthy gits. To be fair, they are perhaps more mercenary than some, and what orc doesn't find it funny to attack an enemy with weapons that they had previously owned? War bosses who start off as blood axe boys tend to be more dangerous on the battlefield, due to their innate cunning and to some degree restraint, preferring to use strategy rather than extemporise. It is perhaps the ability to be sneakier than the other orc clans that gives them such a bad reputation. Because we are going to paint a camouflage pattern, this is going to take a little bit more time. Just to give everyone a headache, the base colour for our Blood Axe's camo scheme will be Nagaroth Knight, a nice deep purple, so deep that once we have finished painting, even deep purple will be asking us to turn it down a bit. Next, we're going to use Temple Guard Blue, Cow Guard Blue and Dolphian Grey in ever decreasing amounts to create the pattern. Playfully vulgar, I'm sure you'll agree. You could use an orange camouflage pattern, or if you're really warped, a green and purple combo. I thought in this instance I'd go for something relatively sedate. Well, sedate if you lived in Shepherd's Bush perhaps and owned a Shih Tzu called Mr. Wiggle Pops. Anyway, let's crack on and paint these horrible little oiks. To start with, I painted the models using Abaddon Black as a base paint and then proceeded to do the skin and teeth. Check out episode 1 if you want a complete rundown of how to do that. We'll put the Nagaroth Knight on first. I usually use this paint for Tyranid armour plates as a base and then bring that up with layers to make it more crustaceanish. In this case though, we'll just see if we can give someone a migraine. Next, Temple Guard Blue, a much lighter colour to break up the purple. 
and in turn will break it up with smaller amounts of Calgar blue, which is fairly neutral, and then smaller again with Olfuin grey, which brightens up the pattern. One of the thoughts in my head when painting this was of the dazzle camouflage schemes that the Royal Navy used during the First World War. The purpose of this was not so much concealment. The intersecting and visually interrupting patterns used were indeed intended to dazzle the enemy, disrupting their ability to calculate range and speed on the target. Then radar and sonar became available and this short lived scheme fell largely out of favour during the Second World War. That and battleship paint jobs are still no match for a nuke. And for those orcs that are wearing a tunic, or appear to be wearing one, we're using Calador Sky for the cloth areas. For this chap's hair, I have given him a blue rinse of Nylac Oxide. Blue is a lucky colour for orcs, and this one reminded me of one of my aunties. Now there's someone who should never be allowed near a machine gun. For the undergarments and uniforms, I'm going with a bad and black throughout. Even with the blingy armour, the blood axes are far more regimented than the other clans, so it seems appropriate. For belts, braces and boots, we're going to be using Morn Fang Brown, just to break up the black a bit and add a little bit more detail. When we shade these later, the boots will look a lot more weathered and worn. For weapons and armour work, we're using lead belcher, going round all of the boot toe caps, belt buckles, bullet cases. For bullet tips and the odd earring though, we're going to use auric armour gold. Finally, the shade coats. Agrax Earthshade here for the uniforms, just to give them a bit of a grimy feel. Then our favourite shade. Nolan oil to give the weapons a good old hint of everyday abuse. Let that dry for a while, grab another coffee and a bourbon if there are any left. Sometimes I like to water my coffee down, but never my bourbon. To polish things off, we're going to base these using Armageddon Dust, a texture paint. And while we're at it, we're going to add the odd rock here and there. For the rocks, I'm using bits of cork painted accordingly which then glued onto the base. Overall, I'm pleased with the way that these have turned out. Well, would you want to mess with these guys? For this build, I've gone down the usual route of buying several kits, getting spares on eBay, adding the odd Cromlech part, and using the occasional stolen weapon from other species. Occasional weaponry sounds like an interesting concept. Do orcs accessorise their ornaments? Do you pair a frag grenade with a bolt gun? Do you use a chainsaw or a scimitar? Decisions, decisions. Well that's another build wrapped up for now. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please like, share and subscribe to Out to Lunch. And if you get half a chance, why not check out our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages. As is customary now, I've also made some slightly more detailed notes and picture guides on blood axes, which can be found on the Out to Lunch website. See you on the ice, folks.